Hey guys, Ron White here, two-time USA Memory Champion. Welcome to the Brain Athlete Show, the Brain Athlete Podcast, the Brain Athlete YouTube channel, whatever it is, whatever we are calling it. This video right here, if you only, this podcast, whatever it is, if you only listen to one of my podcasts ever, my shows ever, I'm about to bring it to you on this one right here. If you want a crash course in memory, if you want a quick memory training course, and I'm gonna condense it into as quick as I can and give you as much value as I can. This is an excerpt. If you love this, if, by the way, if you're watching here right now, I, I want you to look how long this video is. Look how, how long this podcast is. And if you don't have that amount of time right now to dedicate to it, I want you to save this, okay? And I want you, you have to listen to this all the way through. I am going to lay out the core, lay out the foundation for you that is gonna revolutionize the way you learn. It's gonna revolutionize the way you think. It's gonna revolutionize the way you study. You are going to learn to memorize your textbooks faster. You're gonna learn to give speeches without notes. You're gonna, you're gonna learn the core of the system. Now I'm gonna go fast, I'm gonna teach you the core of the system, and then after I teach you the core of the system, guess what I'm gonna do? In this, in this podcast, in this lesson, I am going to give you 10 words and you're gonna memorize them using this system. So I'm really excited about this. Forgive my over excitement. I'm sure everybody's gonna be in the comments and be like, dude, what did this guy just have like 10 coffees? No, I didn't have 10 coffees. I did have an energy drink today, but I'm just, I just love this. Would I dedicate 30 years of my life to something if I didn't really love it? I really love it. And I know the importance of this lesson that, that we are about to do here. By the way, this is an excerpt from my Black Belt Memory course. If you love what I'm teaching you here today, and you're like, I got to get more of this. I'm hooked, Ron. The first one was free, but you got me hooked now. I want the rest. I want you to click the link down below Go to blackbeltmemory.com and there'll be, when you get a black belt in memory, you're going to get a certificate. And I, I'm doing this because I wish I had a certificate right now to show you. Matt, look at this. Isn't this a nice certificate? You'll get a certificate that says you're a black belt in memory. It's kind of like you're a black belt in jujitsu or taekwondo or the martial arts. So click the link down below. Get my black. If you like this, watch all the way to the end. And then if you like it and you're like, Ron, I need more of this, get my black belt memory course. Let's dive in. What is memory training? How can you improve your memory? Let me ask you this question. Have you ever shook somebody's hand and then two seconds later you can't remember their name? You're looking at them and you're like, oh my gosh, what did they just say their name was? I know I said my name's Ron and they said something back, but what did they say? Has that ever happened to you? You're like, Prah, Ron, that has happened to me. It happens to me all the time. Now let's you know, and when it happens in that situation, what do we try to do? We try to be sneaky, right? We try to get the name out of the conversation. We're like, hey, I just want to spell your name the right way. How do you, how do you spell that? And they're like, uh, Bob, B-O-B. And you know, you're like, oh, I didn't know if it had three Bs or two. That, that's why I was asking, you know, and try to play it off or whatever. Or you'll try to introduce somebody else. You're like, hey, Garrett, come over here. Garrett, I want to introduce you to my new friend over here because you can't remember the new friend's name. And then Garrett says, hi, my name's Garrett. And then the other person says their name. We, we have tricks that we've always devised to get around not remembering names or not remembering what we need to. But let's address this head on. Why? Do we forget the name in the first place? Why can't we remember that name? Two seconds later, is it a problem of memory? I don't think it is. I think it is a problem of focus. We're not paying attention. We're not engaged in the conversation. We are walking towards that person. And as we're walking towards that person, we're thinking to ourselves, what do I think of them? What do they think of me? Have I seen them before? What business deals are we gonna do? And we're thinking of all these questions in our brain. And as, as we're introduced to them, they say their name and we're not even focused. We're not paying attention. This is the first key to memory. I'm gonna give you my five steps, my five tips to improve your memory. I, if you wanna write these down as you're listening to it, that's fine. If you're driving or something, certainly don't write it down, just listen. But I'm gonna give you my five tips to improve in your memory. I'll top them down below in the description so you can, uh, you, you can see them there. If you, if you can't take notes, they'll, they'll, they will be down there. But before I give you these five tips, 
Let me share this with you. I'm just a normal guy who learned a memory system. I was introduced to memory training uh, in 1991. I was an 18 year old kid. I was a telemarketer. If you've heard my other podcasts, you know that. I was making phone calls, calling people up, doing cold calls. One guy I called over the phone and I was overcoming his objections. And he said, Ron, you're overcoming my objections so well. Do you wanna go to work for me? I sell memory training seminars. I'll pay you more than you're making now, which was a pretty safe bet, okay? Anybody who said that to me, they would have been right. I went to work because I was making no money, all right? If you would have robbed me, you would have just been practicing. I went to work for him the next day, two or three days later, that was 30 years ago, and he taught me the system. He taught me the system. Back then, he said, Ron, there are three keys to your memory. There's three keys to improving your memory. Over the last 30 years, I've added two to that because I really think there are five steps to this overall memory process, and I've made this my own system now. Here are my five steps. My five steps to improve in your memory. And remember, you can use this. This is a, a quick memory training course. You can use this to remember names. Nah, not really names and faces. But yeah, you could use this to remember names and faces. You could use it to memorize chapters of books, improve your grades, pass that bar exam or law exam or medical exam or certification or project manager exam, whatever. Any type of professional exam. A student, remember what they read or a business person giving a speech without notes. Now, what are the five steps? Here are the five steps. This is gold, people. This is gold. Focus, file, picture, action, review. 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 You say them with me. What are they? Focus, file, Picture, action, review. All right, let's go to number one, focus. What is focus? Right, nod your head, yes, if you've ever shook somebody's hand and two seconds later you can't remember their name. Just nod your head, yes, let me know. I'm looking right now through the camera, through your, t your, your phone or your, your tablet or your computer, and are you nodding your head right now? Has that ever happened to you? It's happened to all of us. Ask ourselves why, just like I said it a minute ago. Is it a problem of memory? No, it's a problem of focus. You're not paying attention. You're thinking about a million different things when they say their name. Here's one tip. That if this is the only tip that you get from this video, and if in two years somebody asks you, hey, did you watch Ron White's video on his crash memory training course? Uh, you're like, yeah, I did watch that. What's the one thing you remember? If this is all you remember, I guarantee you you're going to remember more names than you do right now. When you're walking into that room from now on and you see that new person, instead of asking yourself the question, what do they think of me? Have I seen them before? What, instead of asking yourself all that, ask yourself this question. What is their name? What is their name? What is their name? What is their name? Now, don't say that out loud, okay? That, you know, that people are going to think you're crazy. People are going to think you're crazy like me. You don't want that. Instead, you just want to say it to yourself. You want to focus your brain. Focus is the first key to memory. A lot of you watching this video right now or listening to this show, a lot of you are saying, you know what, Ron? I, I don't necessarily want to get good at names, but I'm a student and I need to remember what I read. I need to remember what I study. You, can, you still need to be focused and you still focus your brain with well-worded questions. How do you focus your brain with a well-worded question if you are a student? Grab that book that you're, you want to study for the test. Read the table of contents. Read the chapter summary, if it has one. Read the back of the book. Why? The back of the books, the chapter summary, the, ch the, the sample quizzes, the all of this, all of this stuff is the author's outline. The author is telling you, hey, this is what I think is important. So I always read that first. It focuses my brain when I'm reading. This is what we need to be looking for instead of just going in there and, and, and reading it. Focus is the number one key to your memory. You focus your brain with well-worded questions. What do I need to look for as I'm reading this? What is that person's name to focus your brain? Focus is the first key to your memory. Let's dive a little bit deeper into focus just real quick. Good nutrition and exercise is gonna also improve your focus. If I don't do anything else every day, I try to drink at least two or three bottled waters a day. Why? A dehydrated brain can't focus. A dehydrated brain can't 
focus. I take a multivitamin every day. I take an omega-3 vitamin every day, supplement every day, and I drink water to focus my brain, to keep my brain healthy. So focus, file, picture, action, review. The first thing is, is you have to be focused. Let's push that to the side and let's now dive into the meat, into the core of this lesson. I, as corny as this sounds, we're going through this here in a minute and it sounds corny. You're like, Ron, I don't know if this would work for me. I'm, I'm a student. I don't know if I can memorize anything with it. Keep this in mind. When I was, I set the record for the fastest to memorize a deck of cards in the United States with this system. I memorized the United States Constitution word for word, 4,543 words with this system. So a lot of you are going to be listening to this. You're going to think, Ron, this is not going to work for me because I need to memorize entire chunks of information. This works for that. I memorized the entire United States Constitution word for word. So as corny as this sounds, Bear with me here for a second. You owe it to yourself to watch this entire lesson. So number one was focus. The first key, the first key to your memory was focus. The number two key to your memory is a file. You need a place to store the data. You need a place to put the information. Imagine this. Imagine we have a computer right here and the, des the desktop of the computer and all the files are jumbled up. You have a, a picture. You have a JPEG. You have a, 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 a spreadsheet. You have a, a document. You have a PDF. You have a movie. You have an audio file. And you got 2,000 of these. And they're jumbled up all on the desktop of this computer. And I say to you, hey, go get this specific file. What would you do? You would look at the desktop of your computer and you'd be like, oh my gosh, I know it's in there somewhere. I just don't know where it's at. The data is there. It's on the desktop of your computer, but it is so scrambled up in this mess. It would take you an hour to find it or maybe two or three hours. But what if you had folders on your desktop? My documents, my spreadsheets, my movies, my audio files, and then you click on each one and there's folders inside of those. And you can boom, 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 go directly to the information just by going to the right folder. Our brains work the same way, all right? It's the same way with our brain. Imagine you are studying for a test and somebody gives you, you get a piece of information. It goes in your ear, goes to the floor of your brain. The next piece of information, in your ear, the floor of your brain. Next piece of information, in your ear, the floor of your brain. You are introduced to somebody. That information goes in your ear. Their name goes in your ear, the floor of your brain. You meet Tom in your ear, the floor of your brain. Lisa in your ear, the floor of your brain. You get a new ATM pin code in your ear, the floor of, floor of your brain. You study for a history test in your ear, the floor of your brain. And all these papers are jumbled up on the floor of your brain. They're not in file folders. Then you're taking the test and you can't think of the answer. And you're like, oh my gosh, I know, I know this. It's in there. It's on the floor of my brain somewhere. You walk out of the room and what happens? Your mind goes, Psst, hey, you want the answer now? Here's the answer. You're like, no, I wanted it when I was taking the test. Why couldn't I remember it when I was taking the test? Because it was on the floor of your brain. It was in a mess. It wasn't organized in a file. If you want to memorize your schoolwork, your study for an exam, give a speech without notes, memorize chapters of books, you need to store the data in a file. A file is a location around a geographic spot. It could be a location around a room, a location around your office, a location around a baseball stadium, a location around some soccer fields. It needs to be a location around geographic places. So, here is the deal with this. You need to use rooms to memorize data. Here's what I would encourage you. I would encourage you to imagine yourself and you're walking into the room that you're in right now. Wherever you're watching this video or listening to this video or listening to this podcast, I want you to imagine the room that you're in right now. If you're in your car, just think back to... Uh, a room that you're familiar with, or you could actually use your car. But let's just say that you're sitting in a room right now. I want you to look around this room and I want you to imagine you're standing in the doorway of this room. You're standing right there in the doorway. I want you to start at your immediate left and go around the room in a circle. Clockwise, I want you to go around the room. And I want you to pick five items around that room. I'm gonna do it here in this room. Mine are gonna be different than yours, but you do it. Guys, this is big, this is huge. Invest the time in this and it'll change the way you learn and you memorize. You're standing in the doorway of that room right there. As you're standing in the doorway, look to your immediate left. What is the first big piece of furniture in your room? 
Is it a desk? Is it a table? Is it a chair? Is it a bookshelf? Is it a window? Is it a closet? Is it a lamp? Is it a plant? Is it a bed? Is it a couch? Is it a table? Is it a refrigerator, a microwave, stove? What is it? Whatever the first big piece of furniture is, I want you to say number one is and whatever it is. For me, number one is going to be the window. Move around the room clockwise. What's your number two? For me, number two is gonna be a bench, like a bench you sit on. Number three, my number three going around the room, I'm gonna use a computer as my number three. It's right there in the middle of the room, so I'm gonna focus on that. Number four, my number four, I'm going to make it this microphone right here, because you can see it, that's good for you. And number five, the Brain Athlete Show logo. So here's mine, one, two, three, four, five. You do it in your room right there. I'm gonna kind of give you a little bit of time to do it, but also kind of keep going. Look around your room right now. Look at number one. Look at number two. Look at number three. Look at number four. And look at number five. One more time. Look at number one. Look at number two. Look at number three for you, not me, not in my room, in your room. Look at number four. Look at number five. Now, stay seated where you're at. Stay where you're at. Don't go anywhere. But I want you to imagine yourself standing up and walking out of the room. Now you're in the next room, right next to this room. You're standing there. Don't go anywhere. This is all in your imagination. Standing in the doorway, do the same thing with that room. Pick five items going around the room clockwise. So it would be six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. It is important to go clockwise. It's also important to pick five. I'll tell you why in a second. You're out of that room now, and you're going into the next room. For me, the next room, number six, I got mine. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. I don't want to confuse you. I got number seven, whatever it is. You say whatever yours is. Number eight, whatever it is. Number nine, whatever it is. And number 10, whatever it is. So look around that room, and I'm going to say the number six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go back to the first room. One, two, three, four. Five. Go to the next room. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go back to the first room. One, two, three, four, five. Go to the next room. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Folks, I'm happy right now. Why am I happy? Because I learned this when I was 18 years old, and it's all I've done pretty much for the last 30 years. And I know the impact it has had on me in learning. I'm excited for what you're learning right now. I genuinely, genuinely am. You got 10 spots numbered. You're focused and you got files. What's the third ingredient to memorize anything? The third ingredient is a picture. Whatever you need to remember, you must translate it into a picture. The mind thinks in pictures. Think about it this way. How many times have you ever said, seen somebody and you're like, oh, I know that person. I can't think of their name, but I know their face. I never forget a face. Oh gosh, what is their name? Why is, do you say that? Because you saw the face. You never saw the name. Think about that for a second. The face was a picture. You remember the face. You don't remember the name because it was not a picture. It was just something you heard. Our brain doesn't remember abstract things that it hears very well. It's much stronger remembering pictures. Whatever we want to remember, we have to translate it into a picture. That means if I'm trying to remember a string of numbers, 21, I might use a deck of cards. So I take the number 21 and I turn it into a picture, a deck of cards, because the game 21. Uh, the number 11, I might make it a goalpost because a, a goalpost looks like a number 11, a soccer goal or a football goalpost. 12, I might make eggs because there is a dozen eggs. Whatever you want to remember, you need to translate it into a picture. If I want to remember the word freedom, I might think of an eagle, you know, a bald eagle. That, that's a symbol of freedom for a lot of people. Whatever you want to remember, you need to translate it into a picture. You got to be focused. You got to have a file and you got to have pictures. Now, if you're studying for a a history test or a Spanish test or any type of test for, for your school and your studies, the pictures are going to be, you're going to read the history facts or the science facts or the bar exam facts, and you're going to create pictures that remind you of those facts, okay? So those are going to be pictures. 
And then you're going to take those pictures and mentally imagine them around the room interacting with the locations that you have numbered. This is known as the memory palace, the mind palace, the method of loci, the journey method. It's called all of those. It's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. So you're going to see these pictures and you're going to place them around the room. But there's more to it. You got to be focused, right? You got to have your files, which we just built 10. You, and if you're going to build more, I'll give you, I'll, I'll tell you how in a second how you can build more. You got to have pictures, whatever you want to remember translated into a picture. What's next? Action, action and emotion. I want to ask you a question right now. Everybody watching this video, everybody listening to this, this podcast, ask yourself this question. Have you ever been in a car accident? Have you? Have you ever been in a car accident? Was it two weeks ago or was it 20 years ago? I was in a car accident 32 years ago. And I bet I could give you all the details of that accident. You think of that accident right now that you were in, that car accident. And, and you know, answer this silently to yourself, of course, or blurt it out. I don't care, whatever. But was it day or night time? I bet you could tell me. Where was it at? I bet you could tell me. Who was driving? I bet you could tell me. How did it happen? I bet you could tell me. I bet you could give me all the details of that accident, even if it happened 30 years ago. But you couldn't tell me everywhere you drove last week. Why? Why can we remember all the details of that accident from decades ago or years ago, but we can't tell you where we went last week? Here's why. That car accident had, boom, action in it. It had emotion in it. Action and emotion set something in your memory. Can you think of a really painful day in your life, emotionally or physically? You probably remember it. Why? The emotion, our hippocampus in our brain said, ah, this is painful. This is emotional. We are going to remember this. Action and emotion will stick something in your memory. So using that knowledge, we need to make these pictures that we place around the room full of action and emotion. You have to be focused. You have to have files. You have to have pictures. You have to have action and emotion. And the last step, you have to review. If you do all of these things and you memorize a poem today or you memorize a quote or whatever, math formulas, definitions, history information, and you don't review it and you return to it in a week or a month, you're not going to have that great a recall. Review is a very important part of the memory, memory process. It's what's, tr it's what's going to put it into your long-term memory, okay? I memorized the United States Constitution, 4,543 words. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect, perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, secure the blessings of a liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Article 1, Section 1, all legislative powers herein vested, herein granted, shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which shall consist of a Senate and House of Representatives. The, and then it goes on, you know, the, the, it tells you the Senate and the House and all that. Here's the point. I still know it today. Why? Review. Review is a key ingredient to your memory. Focus, file, picture, action, review. These are the five steps. Now, let's have a memory test. <laughs> if you have been paying attention and you've done this up to this point, you should do fairly well here. Don't stress out and do not, 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 do not write down what I'm about to tell you. I want you to do this only in your imagination, only in your brain. So I'm going to ask you, number one, are you focused? If you're focused, just say yes. Are you focused? Okay. Number two, do you know your 10 files? If you do, just say yes. Let's review them here together. Number one, say what it is. Number two, say what it is for you. Everybody's is going to be different. Say number three, whatever it is. Say number four, whatever it is. Whatever it is for you. This is mine. Yours is different. Five, whatever it is. Mentally go to the next room. Say what number six is. Say what number seven is. Say what number eight is. Say what number nine is. And say what number 10 is. Now you have 10 items, 10 files, 10 locations. This is where we're going to store the data mentally. You're focused. You have your files. Now I'm going to give you 10 words to memorize, 10 pictures. Whatever you remember needs to, want to remember needs to be a picture. Here's the first word I want you to memorize. Don't write it down. Visualize it. 
The first word I want you to memorize is a human brain. I want you to imagine I'm cutting the top of your head off right here. I'm taking the brain out of your skull. I'm taking the brain out of your skull. Look over there at number one, and I set your brain down over there. Look over there at number one. You're, the brain, the juices are dripping off of it. Remember, action, emotion, the more vivid, the better the memory. Don't just casually see it. See it, sit. maybe the brain starts twitching around. Maybe you go over there and you grab the brain and you touch the brain and you can feel it, it's squishy. Feel it, see it, a brain sitting right there. Now move to number two, the second piece of furniture in your room. In that piece of furniture, I want you to imagine a clock, like a cuckoo clock, cuckoo, cuckoo. Look over there on that piece of furniture and I want you to see a cuckoo clock and the clock goes cuckoo, cuckoo. You're looking over there and there's a clock on that. Go back and review number one, the brain. See a cuckoo bird, a clock on number two. Cuckoo, cuckoo. See a cuckoo bird right there. Number three, on number three, I want you to see an organizer, a day timer, like you're planning your day. You got an organizer over there and you're tearing out the pages and you got the pages of an organizer and you're ripping them all up. Imagine your planner is over there, your organizer, and I'm tearing up the pages. Look at that, see it. See the organizer, see the pages getting torn out. Organizer, see it getting torn out. Go back and review two, review one. The brain, the clock, the organizer. Now go to number four. On number four, I want you to see a bottled water. And I want you to see water, and we're pouring water all out on number four. Imagine you're dying of thirst. You're dying of thirst. And you go over there, and you get a drink of that water. Oh, that feels so good. Now we got four in this room. One, two, three, four. Go to number five. Go to number five in this room. And on number five, I want you to see exercise. I like to do jujitsu. You might like to play tennis or run or jog or lift weights. See exercise on number five. Whatever your favorite form of exercise is, even if it's pushing the remote control buttons on your TV, whatever your favorite form of exercise is, see that on number five. See it. Exercise. Go back and review four, the water. Review three, organizer. Review two and review one. We're halfway through this memory test. Now move into the next room. You're on number six now in your imagination. That's the first location in the next room, number six. I want you to imagine a goalpost, like on a football field. Boom, it's good. See a goalpost and boom, you're kicking a field goal or you're scoring the winning goal. A goalpost on number six. See it. See the, hear the excitement, hear the excitement of the crowd. Hear the announcers yelling, goal. Goal on number six. Go back and review five, the exercise, four, the water, three, the organizer, two, the clock, and one, the brain. Now move to number seven in your brain. Remember, don't write these down, just memorize it. Move to number seven in your brain. I want you to imagine a small studio, one bedroom apartment. I used to live in a small one bedroom. They're called efficiency apartments sometimes. I used to live in an efficiency apartment in Texas and Houston, and that thing was so small, I could stand in the shower, flush the toilet, and put something in the microwave all at the same time. And I apologize for that picture. I know you're trying to learn right now. But I want you to see an efficiency apartment right there on number, a small apartment on number seven. And you're putting something in the microwave. You're putting something in the refrigerator. You're doing all of it right there on that one. And say the word out loud, efficiency. Go back and review six, goal. Review, go back and review five, exercise. Number seven was efficiency. Number eight, move over to your next piece of furniture mentally in your brain. On number eight, I want you to see Popeye the Sailor Man. Remember the cartoon? If you don't know who Popeye the Sailor Man is, he just, he liked to eat spinach. So I want you to see the Popeye there or just somebody that you know eating spinach, a can of spinach, and he would say he had big muscles because he ate spinach. I want you to see spinach all over that one. It's just spinach covering that piece of furniture. Spinach on that one. That is number eight. Number nine, on piece of furniture, number nine, say whatever it is in your brain, say whatever it is in your imagination. On pieces of furniture, number nine, I want you to imagine uh, 
fish. And I want you to see fish jumping out of that piece of furniture. And fish are just jumping out of the piece of furniture. Fish are jumping out and they're, they're, you're catching fish and you're pulling them in. Fish all over that. Fish on that piece of furniture. Fish. Last one, number 10. I want you to see your favorite sports team. Whatever your favorite sports team is, could be a professional team, could be a kid's little league team, and imagine that team playing a game. They're winning the championship, unless they're the New York Yankees, then hopefully they're coming in last. I'm just kidding. If you're a Yankees fan, uh, I'm not kidding. I don't like the Yankees, but we can still be friends. I want you to see your favorite team on number 10 there, and they're winning the trophy. They're throwing you the ball. See it. Don't just say it. Team on the last one. Review nine the fish, review eight, the spinach, review seven, the efficiency apartment, review six, the goalpost. Now go back into this room. Review five, which was exercise. Review four, which was water. Review three, which was the organizer. Review two, which was the clock. And review one, which was the brain. I'm going to test you right now. You can test yourself in one of two ways. Stop this podcast, stop this video, whatever, and you can write them out if you want or just say them around the room. Pause it right now and do that if you want. If not, I'm going to just quiz you. Let's see how you did. Let's look over there at number one. What was it? It was a brain. What was number two? It was a clock. What was number three? It was an organizer, a planner. What was number four? Water. What was five? Exercise. Going in the next room, what was six? It was a goalpost. What was seven? It was an efficiency apartment. What was number eight? Spinach. What was number nine? Fish. And what was number 10? Team. You got all 10? Give yourselves a round of applause. If you missed one, who cares? Seriously, who cares? It's probably because you got distracted or your picture wasn't vivid enough or your emotion wasn't strong enough. But focus in on how we did this. I just gave you 10 words. How did we memorize them? We memorize them by placing them on pieces of furniture around our home or our office or the room that we're in right now. And we used a ton of action and emotion. And we also reviewed as we did it. We went back and forth and reviewed each one. This is key to your memory. Now, I know what you're thinking. Okay, Ron, I just memorized 10 words around a room, but it was simple. How is this going to help me memorize my schoolwork or pass the bar exam or a medical exam? Or how as a business person is is this going to help me give a speech without notes or a sales presentation? Ron, how do I stop losing sales? Because I walk into a sales call, I leave something out of my presentation. I can't think of it. And as I'm walking out, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, why didn't I say this? Why didn't I think of this? Ron, why does this happen? But also, how am I going to use this mind palace You said this was going to solve all my problems. How is looking at the microphone and remembering water going to solve any problems for me? Ah, excellent question. I'm glad you asked. This is going to solve many of your memory problems because it's going to give you a basket to put data into. I want you to imagine this. Imagine you go to the grocery store right now and you need to buy as many items as you can but you're not gonna use a basket. How many items do you think you could carry? Five, six, seven, eight, if they're small or you got the right handle on them and you're not trying to drop any of them, maybe just four, right? Now, let's imagine you grab a basket when you walk in the store. You could fill that up with 50 items. Shopping is, did the, the shopping, is the same process. You take sh- stuff off the shelves and you put them in your cart or you carry them, but you can get a lot more if you have a basket. This mind palace becomes a basket. We have 10 items in your mind palace, so you can remember 10 items. But what if you had 50 items in your basket, 50 locations? You could memorize 50 words. I had 
For one project I did, 2,400 locations memorized, 200,400 files, baskets. I memorized 2,400 words, 2,400 pieces of data. And actually, I put three words on each location, so I actually memorized about 7,500, almost 7,500 words. So what can we use this for, though? If this is a basket, what can we put in this basket? Let's pretend like you have to give a speech tomorrow. And this speech is how to make a better brain, how to build a better brain. I'm giving you that assignment and your homework is you want to build a better brain. That's your homework assignment. And you, I want you to get, stand up in front of the group and give this presentation and I don't want you to read your notes. Not only do you have to give us 10 points on how to build a better brain, you can't read your notes. Guys, you can't see this right now, but I'm not reading any notes. I'm not reading any notes. And the reason I'm not reading any notes is because I know this information. How do I know this information? I initially learned it by putting it on files, by putting it around a room. You are building your file cabinet. You are building your files. I want you to see on your files, I want you to see the 10 points of your speech. Here's your speech. Number one, we want to build our brain. Number two, we build our brain by managing our time correctly. In other words, you're writing out your speech. You're writing out your speech the night before. Number three, we build our brain by organizing our brain. Number four, we build our brain by drinking plenty of water. Number five, we build our brain by exercising. Number six, what's on the next one? Your goalpost in the next room. We, we build our brain by setting goals for ourselves. Number seven, what was on number seven? We build our brain by being more efficient. So here's what I'm saying to you. The night before you give the speech or a week before or whatever, you write out your speech. You write out all 10 things, 15 things, 20 things that you wanna talk about. After you have your speech written out, then you take your speech, you take the main ideas, you take the bullet points and you imagine them around the room. The next day you get up in front of your room, no notes in your hand, and you give the speech with from memory with no notes. You think back to the first location. Hey guys, what's on number one? A brain. Hey guys, I wanna talk to you today about how to build our brain, how to think better, how to have better thoughts. Number two, what's on number two? A clock. I wanna to talk, to, so the first key to doing this is to manage our time effectively. We've all got 24 hours in a day. If we let our days get away from us, our brain's gonna get scattered and stressed and we don't wanna be scattered and stressed. Number three, we want to organize our brain, organize it and do the first things first, the big tasks first. We wanna stay organized to build a better brain. We also wanna give our brain good nutrition by drinking plenty of water. A dehydrated brain can't focus. Now don't point to your files when you're giving your speech, but you get the idea here. Guys, exercise. Exercise is one of the best things that you can do for your brain, but you also gotta set goals to keep your brain focused and to keep your brain, what's on number seven? To keep your brain efficient. Great brain foods are spinach and fish. But guys, one of the most important things is, is the people around you, don't let them stress you out. Work, because you're a stressed out brain can't focus. Work together with your friends and the family as a team to build a better brain. Guys, I just gave you, I taught you a memory system here, okay? The five steps, right? What are they? Focus, file, picture, action, review. We took those five steps and we built a mind palace in your imagination. Then we memorized 10 words on this mind palace. Do you realize what we've done here in just a really short amount of time? You've learned a core of the system. You've built the, your first 10 item mind palace. I gave you a test and you memorized 10 words. And now I gave you an application for what you could use it for. You could use it to give a speech or a presentation. Now you may say, Ron, I never have to give speeches or presentations. I'm just not, that's not my thing. Well, do you ever take tests? Do you ever take any type of test? You use the same process. Let's say you're not given a speech on how to build a better brain, but you're taking a test tomorrow on how to build a better brain. Boom, 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 boom. You put them around the room. This could have been a chemistry test. We could have been memorizing the periodic table of elements. What's the first element on the periodic table? Hydrogen. What's the first, what do we gotta do? We gotta turn it into a picture. So let's see somebody waving high. Where do we put it? On the first piece of furniture in our room. Look over there and there's somebody waving high. 
The second element on the periodic table of elements is helium. We turned it into a picture. What could be a picture for helium? Say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. I know we're thinking probably a helium balloon. See, helium balloons lifting up that piece of furniture. You could memorize the periodic table of elements. I think there's like 118 elements, something like that, if you had 118 pieces of furniture. You could use this to memorize the presidents of the United States. On the first piece of furniture, see a washing machine for Washington. A dam, like a dam on a river. A dam for Adams. A chef for Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Medicine for on a fourth piece of furniture. Medicine for Madison. A man in a rowboat for Monroe. Monroe. James Monroe. Guys, this Mind Palace method is, I'm so passionate about it. Because if you implement this, this can really, really change the way you memorize anything. If you're studying for an exam, now here's some common objections that you may get. Ron, I don't see how this can help me memorize huge quantities of information. Well, the answer to that is, is you're going to need more files. You're going to need more locations. That's, that's, that's true. But the work is all front-loaded. I mean, it really is all front-loaded. And you may say, well, Ron, I only have 20 items in my house. I live in a small, a small apartment. Who cares? Use your friend's house. Use your cousin's house. Use your neighbor's house. Use your favorite restaurant, your favorite bookstore, your school, your office. I numbered 2,500 pieces of furniture, and I, I, I did about 40 or 50 in my house, and then I did more around other houses around the city or around the town. So build your mind palace. Use different locations uh, to expand your mind palace. So that's that's the first thing that you have to do. And people say, Ron, that's too much work. That's too much work. Is it really? Is it really too much work to set down for a day or two days or three days and learn a system that you could memorize and use for the rest of your life? Is it too much work to number 50 locations and then spend two or three days learning them? No, 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 no. It's not too much work. It's what you need to do. Imagine this. Imagine there are two people, and they have a, 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 a wood chopping contest. We're going to see who can chop down the most trees. The first person gets out there, and they just start chopping down the trees. They're like, I'm going to win this contest. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. They're chopping down as many trees as they can. The next guy, and I'm going to make him the hero of the story, and I'm going to make him a little bit older because I'm a little bit older. The first guy's a young guy. He goes out there, and he's chopping down as many trees as he can. Second guy's a, uh, an older guy. He's been around the block. He's got a little bit of wisdom. He said, I'm going to let that kid just start chopping down the trees. I'm just going to let him go. I am going to spend the first hour of this wood chopping contest sharpening my saw. He sits down and he just sharpens his saw and he gets it razor sharp. The young kid looks back and says, man, this old man, he's stupid. I'm so far ahead of him. I'm going to kill him in this contest. After that hour, that knife that axe is so sharp it could just chop through all the trees and that's what he does boom 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 he moves faster he passes up the young guy he wins the competition in regards to your memory i'm going to suggest to you the sharpening the saw is building your mind palace expanding it out I like five in a room. I just think it's a good number. It keeps your brain less cluttered. Plus, it enables you to learn the numbers quicker. If I say, what's number 10 right now, you can jump to the last piece of furniture in the second room, and you could say, team, team was number 10. What was the fifth item I gave you? You could just jump to the fifth piece of furniture in this room, the last one, and say, exercise, exercise. If you can learn the numbers quicker if you have them grouped by five in a room. Now you also may be saying, Ron, I need to I need to learn how to uh, I need to learn how to to take this to the next level. I need to learn how to take this to the next step. If you want to learn this and take this to the next step, I really believe in this. I mean, I, and I hope you know that I believe in this. I have a full course on this. It's called Black Belt Memory. If you click the link down below, I have a free gift for you that's going to help you take your memory to the next level. But right now, you're probably having a lot of questions. You're like, Ron, how do I turn every number one to a thousand into a picture? That's in the Black Belt Memory course. Ron, how do I use this to memorize poems word for word? That's in the Black Belt Memory course. Ron, how do I use this to memorize names and faces? That's in the Black Belt Memory course. How do I use this to learn foreign languages? You guessed it. That's in the Black Belt Memory course. 
If you want to learn how to mem- apply this to names and faces, given speeches without notes, which I just touched on here, but memorizing chapters of books, like the main ideas from the chapter, that's in the course. Uh, foreign languages, that is in the course. Uh, quotes, math formulas. Uh, I like to memorize a lot of Stoic quotes, Stoicism, Marcus Aurelius. You can apply it to that. Uh, definitely learn fra- key phrases in foreign languages or key words. I don't necessarily think the best way to learn a foreign language is to memorize a foreign language, but it can give you a great head start, a great boost if you memorized 100 or 200 words in a language. And I do believe it's a great course for students to improve their grades. So it is down below in the description. It's called blackbeltmemory.com. I'll put a link down below there. Guys, when you complete this course, you're going to get a certificate, and it's going to say, you, and it's going to have your name, has earned the level of black belt in memory, and I'm going to sign it at the bottom and you're, this is a certificate that you can print and frame on your wall. Go to blackbeltmemory.com in the comments down below there, and you will you will see some of my students holding their certificate. I call it Black Belt Memory because I do jujitsu. Currently, I'm a purple belt in jujitsu. So I remember when I first earned my blue belt, what a good feeling that was. And when I first earned my purple belt, what a good feeling that was. And maybe if I progress to brown and black, I'm sure those are going to be awesome feelings. But... I want you to feel that. So you are going to get belt, colored belts as you move up each level of memory training. When I set the record for the fastest to memorize a deck of cards in the United States, I should teach you how in this system, how to memorize a deck of cards. That's just, that's for fun. But a lot of you want to do this for fun. A lot of you want to, you know, this this course is really good for, for three groups of people. It's good for people who are like students and need to pass an exam or need to pass uh, some type of, of certification. It is great for people who uh, are just like to know more, just like to learn about the world around them. And it's great for people who like to teach others. Maybe you've got kids and you want to teach us to them or you've got a, 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 a class that you belong to, a group or a company, and you want to teach it to others. So those are the three groups of people. I hope you clicked the link down below and got it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and what you like. Comment down below if you could still remember those 10 words. Can you still remember those 10 words? If you can, type them in the comments below. I'm going to give you a test. I'm going to go back and check you. If So comment down below. By the way, make sure you subscribe to this channel and subscribe to these videos. This is something that I'm wanting to just give you tons of value, and I hope that you believe that. What are the five things you need to memorize anything? They are focus, file. Picture, action, review, focus, file, picture, action, review. Number one, what was on number one? It was a brain. What was on number five? It was exercise. What was on number 10? It was a team. What was on number six? It was a goalpost. Guys, this is big. This is big. Give me a like if you've got at least eight out of 10 correct. Give me a like if you gave at least seven out of 10 correct. I'm wondering how many, of you, how many of you did. And even if you didn't, but you know why you missed what you missed, give me a like. Give me some feedback. Guys, my name is Ron White, two-time USA memory champion. I'm looking forward to this journey with you. And I'll see you, I'll talk to you on the next episode, lesson, podcast, whatever this is.